What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. In today's episode I want to talk about one of my favorite search baits and a few of the things that I think about before I throw it. Crank baits. Now like I said, I think crank baits are a great search bait, but I'll be honest, it's not the first thing that I pick up in the morning. That being said, I have caught bass every month of the year with a crankbait, so it definitely has earned a place in my box. So one thing I want to get out of the way early is that crankbaits are not something that you just chuck and wind. You really have to visualize mentally the path of that crankbait, exactly what it's doing on the bottom, what it's running into, and what it looks like. So a few things about a crankbait that are super important are the depth of the crankbait, the size of the crankbait, the wobble of the crankbait, and the color of the crankbait. Now there's probably other things that people consider when throwing them, but those are the four things that I start with. Let's talk about the depth. So the depth of crankbaits is mostly determined by the length and the angle of this bill. So you can see this one is a 20 foot diver. You can see the bill on that, it's a, like a shovel. And by the way, there's some teeth marks on here. I typically don't throw crankbaits this big. I tried it on Lake Champlain and it worked. You can see this one, I think this was a 12, 12 to 14, this is a Rapala DT14. Here's a Rapala DT8, but you can see the various bill sizes and how those are designed to kind of plow that crankbait down. Now obviously if I'm fishing three to five feet, I don't want to throw a deep diving crankbait because it's not going to go anywhere. So it's good to have a variety of crankbaits to cover all the depths. Another thing that I've learned from my experience is obviously it's great if you can get a crankbait and you can fish it in some riprap and some rock piles and you dial in that depth and your crankbait exactly and this thing goes tick, 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 tick across the bottom. That is a great way to fish and that gets a lot of bites. But don't overlook the ability for crankbaits to catch suspended fish because they'll do that as well. So make sure you have a great idea of the area that you're fishing and the depth of your crankbait. Your fishing line will also play a role in the depth of the crankbait. So normally you probably want to stick with light line 8 to 10, 12 pound in order to get this thing down the whole way. Now there's obviously many different sizes of crankbait. Most of the year I'm going to lean towards one about this size, kind of on the smaller side. Maybe in the spring and summer I'll chuck a bigger one like this, but I think small is a good starting point, especially in spring and fall. I think they just look better in the water, I think they look a little bit more natural and I think they get more bites. But if there's a day you're fishing and you happen to see some massive bluegill or some massive forage swimming around, upsize it, try it out. Crankbaits is definitely something that you got to get out there and just throw and experiment with. For colors, I mainly stick with three categories. My favorite colors are reds and browns. I don't know what it is about them. They work great in stained water, clear water. They may imitate crayfish pretty well. I don't know. But reds and browns are always the first color that I throw. The next color is natural or kind of like this shad looking one like white and gray type colors like this if i can't get bit on a red one or i'm getting short strikes or i just want to mix it up a little bit this is generally the second color that i'll go with and the last color is chartreuse and blue this one's kind of my go-to for stained water after my red one but i've caught a lot of fish on chartreuse and blue colors and that's pretty much it for colors for me i don't overcomplicate it when it comes to crankbaits i think it's kind of a they're either on it or they're not on it type of deal. I think red and brown, natural, white and clear, and chartreuse and blue are pretty much all you need. Now let's talk about perhaps the most important thing and that is the retrieval or the action or the wobble on the bait. So a deep diving crankbait with a wide bill is obviously going to have a very wide erratic wobble. Some days that's good, some days that's what the fish want. Personally, I like the narrow or no bills at all. And I'm gonna consider a lipless crankbait a crankbait for this discussion, even though it has no bill. And you guys know I love the lipless crankbait from some of my other videos. I just feel like most of the time, the tighter wobble works best for me, no matter what month of the year it is. Again, this is another thing that you just have to get out and experiment with. It's gonna change month by month, day by day. But I wanna share with you a few of the things that I do when I'm fishing crankbaits that have worked for me. First of all, like I said, they are a great search bait especially the lipless. If I had to only own one crankbait, it would be this one. I think it's the best because you can cast it a mile, it'll sink so you can fish it deep, you can fish it shallow, you can rip it through grass. It's kind of like just like the invincible crankbait. You can just do anything you want with it. And it catches a ton of fish. 
big fish too. Big large mouth, big small mouth. This thing just does it all. It's just something that you have to get out there and throw to understand and, and, and see, because it works. The next two crankbaits that I think are elite are the wiggle wart and the square bill. Again, I don't know what it is about the action of these two, but they produce bites. This is a storm wiggle wart. I don't know what it is about this thing. It is the best crankbait that I've ever thrown that has a bill. So we'll, we'll leave lipless crankbaits out of it. If I had to own one other crankbait after a lipless crankbait, it would be a wiggle wart. There's only two baits that I've ever caught two smallmouth on in one cast. One is a jerk bait, a six cents jerk bait actually, and the other is the wiggle wart. And you can see how small this is. I caught two three to four pound smallies in one cast with this bait. Yeah. So again, this thing may look like a crayfish down there. I don't know. It works, especially when the fish are on a reaction bite or the water's cold. This thing is incredible. Add it to your box. I like square bills because they're so light and you can kind of fish them really slow and kind of like hover over the rocks, hover over the wood and just kind of feel every little bit that you're going by. And that is how I get bites with a square bill. It's kind of the opposite of a lipless. You know, you can kind of go slow and feel stuff. Lipless, I'm just kind of chucking and winding, starting and stopping, searching. This thing you can do that with too, but it's kind of limited to six feet or less, and it's great for a round cover. Those are the two or three main styles of crankbaits that I like, but I have caught some big fish on deep divers. If I'm in 15 to 20 feet of water and I see fish suspended and I can't get them to bite a Carolina rig or a swim bait or some other stuff that I throw that's deeper, I'll try one of these. And a lot of the time, you can get one or two to react to a crankbait, especially if it's plowing up the bottom like we talked about earlier. And honestly, I was shocked. This is a humongous crankbait. I caught a lot of smallmouth on this on Lake Champlain, and I couldn't really believe it, to be honest with you, but it worked. One other thing I wanna talk about with crankbaits is retrieval. Again, you do not want to just chuck and wind these things the same way all day long. When you're throwing them during the day, you want to maybe wind it fast. Next time, wind it slow. Try to feel some cover. Feel around a little bit. The next time, and my favorite way to throw a crankbait is starting and stopping. I've caught the most and the biggest fish starting and stopping a crankbait. So reeling it and stopping, allowing it to float up. Reeling it, stopping it, allowing it to float up. And I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, they'll hit it when it's floating up, even in the middle of the summer. So definitely try that. Don't just chuck in and wind it. Think about it while you're fishing it. And I'm telling you, you'll get more bites. So think about those things next time you guys throw a crankbait. I hope it works for you. And let me know in the comments if it does. Thanks for watching.